I'm Luke Story. For the past 22 years, I've been relentlessly committed to my deepest passion, designing the ultimate lifestyle based on the most powerful principles of spirituality, health, psychology, and personal development. The Lifestylist Podcast is a show dedicated to sharing my discoveries and the experts behind them with you. Okay, friends, you just dropped into episode 372. It's a solo cast Q&A show wherein we cover back pain, microdosing, ice baths, smart drugs and brain function, EMF blocker scams, and depression. Our illustrious sponsors today are none other than blueblocks.com slash lifestylist, where you can get some blue blocking eyewear and other related products, such as their incredible uh, Lumi sleep bulbs. We've got waterandwellness.com slash story, where you can get all things water, the Quinton C minerals, the hydrogen tablets, and of course, the Aqua True reverse osmosis purification system. And then finally, onit.com slash Luke, where you can get your hands on some alpha brain and some other incredible health products. So today's Q&A questions are taken from our 6,000 member Lifestylist Podcast Facebook group. If you want to join, simply search that term on Facebook and join us today. In this solo cast, I cover a wide range of topics and do my best to share some useful info with you based on my personal experience. However, remember to refer to a healthcare professional before undergoing any medical treatment. So what you're about to hear is not medical advice. It's just a podcast, folks. So take it with a grain of salt and do your own research before getting crazy out there, okay? And remember, I'm going to drop a ton of brands and info in this episode, so make sure to check the show notes for links. And you can find those show notes at lukestory.com slash 173. Uh, There you will also find a complete transcript and all sorts of other goodies related to this episode. You can also visit my online store at lukestory.com slash store. I think a lot of people still don't know that exists based on the number of questions I get about where people can find my recommendations for products, et cetera. Okay, here we go. The first question is from Johanna. She said two things. I'm eight months postpartum and breastfeeding still. Have chronic right shoulder pain up into uh, the neck and both shoulder blades. Been to see the chiropractor, but it doesn't help. Don't want to take painkillers due to breastfeeding. Tried beta and ice. Nothing helps. Any ideas or recommendations? Uh, The pain part is easier than the breastfeeding part, I think. That makes it a little bit tricky. And as someone who doesn't breastfeed, uh, I'm going to just shoot from the hip here and give some recommendations that, again, you should definitely look into before undergoing. First off, I'd like to say kudos on breastfeeding. So important. Uh, No formula could ever replace mother's milk, straight up. Uh, I remember a few years back, a friend of mine had a kid and uh, she was unable to breastfeed. And so she sent me all of the different baby formula that she could find on the market. And I was shocked to find how horrifically toxic all of it was. Now that was, you know, six years ago or so. So uh, it might've changed, but it was, you know, it was full of seed oils and like soy and just the weirdest stuff. Uh, I thought, man, who is feeding their kids this? Uh, That said, just, I'm just going to throw this in there. I wasn't planning on it, but I did find some things at that time, uh, wherein mothers that were kind of in the Weston price scene were using things like bone broth and beef liver and other very nutrient dense, um, uh, foods and creating essentially their own, uh, formula. So that might be something uh, that ladies might want to look into if they find that they can't breastfeed for any reason. But I always love to hear when a mother's breastfeeding because I love nature and the way God created us. Uh, now, the pain part is, uh, you know, something that I'm going to take a stab at here. And I would definitely research these before trying them, especially the things that you take internally. So I can share what works for me, but you'll need to explore the safety, of course, for the baby, especially with these two. The first one is uh, Kratom from a company called Super Speciosa. It's an herb from Southeast Asia. And it's very effective at killing pain. But again, I don't know that you want that in your bloodstream. Something I've used a lot for pain that has been incredible are two different peptides that are injectable. So in most cases, you'll need to find these uh, from an understanding doctor that works with this kind of alternative medicine. The two peptides are TB500 and BPC157. And those are injected at the site of the pain. Now, not everyone is up for sticking a needle. Uh, through their skin and doing a subcutaneous injection, but I do it just about every morning and I love it. Uh, Not that easy to find though. And be mindful if you're going to seek out peptides online. There are 
you know, a number of questionable sites that sell peptides. And you want to be careful, of course, before putting anything like that in your body. But there are doctors out there that um, have access to compounding pharmacies and such where they can get high quality and clean peptides. A couple of safe topical options would be local red light therapy using the flex beam. It's portable and can easily be wrapped around almost any body part. Then we've got PEMF therapy using something like a pulse centers machine. Most cities have practitioners if you can afford uh, to go see them over buying one yourself. They're quite expensive. I think they're forty to sixty thousand dollars or something. But you can pay for sessions uh, with a practitioner. Another one is cold laser therapy using something like epoclasers.com or epiclasers.com. It's E-P-O-C-H. I still don't know how you say it. I think you say it's an epic. I don't know. Uh, But they're also expensive. So you might want to find a practitioner to treat you in your local area. Uh, For those of you living in LA, Transformational Healing Universe uh, in Los Angeles has both of those actually. They have the PEMF and that particular laser. There's also a laser that I have at home. It's called the Power Medic laser. It's a cold laser, uh, not cheap, but has definitely been worth the investment over the years for me. But the Epic lasers is incredibly powerful and you definitely need a practitioner to use that. And then there's something called the New Fit, which is a breakthrough neuromuscular electrical stimulation device. And it works by sending electrical impulses through the skin to nerves and tissue to elicit uh, muscle contractions and sensory impulses. These impulses then mimic action potentials from both the peripheral and central nervous systems, which is how they communicate with other parts of the body. So the impulses then communicate with sensory and motor neurons to activate contracile and sensory muscle fibers, resulting in the stimulation of muscle tissue and nerve activation, and of course, increasing blood flow. And you can actually locate a provider in your area at new.fit. That's N-E-U dot F-I-T. This stuff is incredible. And again, to buy the device and get trained on it yourself is not practical for most people, but uh, they do have a great uh, provider locator on their site. Again, that's N-E-U dot F-I-T. Okay. On the cheaper tip, acupuncture can also be great for pain if you can find someone skilled near you. And apart from those interventions, which will treat the root causes of pain, you can always find temporary relief with topical applications like various CBD creams and general pain creams. And I'll give you a hot tip here. If you apply something called DMSO on the pain area prior to using pain creams, you will get a much deeper penetration and thus better pain relief. I use this stuff all the time. Pretty much any time I'm putting something on my skin that I want to get into my skin and into the tissue... I've got a little roll on DMSO and I'll put it on there and then rub it in. I would go slow with the DMSO. Some people are more sensitive to it. It can create kind of a burning sensation if you're not used to it. Although I've never personally experienced that, but I have put it on a number of other people that were like, ow, that kind of stings. So go easy and, uh, you know, take it slow when you're using the DMSO. Next up is Ryan. He says, who's the beverage freaks in the group? I've always loved having a variety of drinks. And for years now, I mostly just make my own mixes with quality water or soda stream. I've tried to go in the low or no sugar direction and often use essential oils, sometimes a little fruit juice, rooibos or nettle tea or electrolyte powders. Does anyone have any favorite DIY drink combos? Uh, Good question. You know, I think that all of us want something tasty that's also healthy, that's not water, tea, or coffee, right? So I like his idea with the essential oils in the soda machine. I might look into that at some point, actually. I have to say my favorite drink by far, like a bottled or canned drink, is something called HydroShot. It's a hydrogen water infused with green tea extract and L-citrulline. And it is incredible for mental clarity uh, as a workout prep and a workout recovery drink. And also great for just general blood flow. In fact, the uh, owner of that company emailed me some of these uh, thermal imaging photos that were really impressive. So they do a thermal imaging, say, of you know someone's foot or ankle or hand, and then they drink the drink and they just get this surge of blood flow. It's it's really quite miraculous. And uh, I drink one of these actually every single morning when I wake up. It's called HydroShot. We'll put a link to it in the show notes. For electrolytes, I use something called Element. It's a powder. 
uh, in many delicious flavors. And you just add it to cold water, stir it, and your thirst is quenched for hours. And I find the taste delicious. I mean, it does have salt and you know other minerals and stuff in it. So it's definitely got an electrolyte flavor. It doesn't taste like you know a fruit soda or something. But I have grown to really enjoy that. And it's also great for food cravings and curbing late night snacking. So that's Element, L-M-N-T. They're one of our sponsors some of the time as well. You might've already heard me talk about them. And like all our sponsors actually use their stuff. And apart from those, there are a few brands of sugar-free natural sodas on the market. And I sometimes drink those, not a lot, but I'd say if I had to pick one brand, it's called Olipop because they use more natural flavors and also reverse osmosis water. Now, many bottled and canned drinks use very poorly filtered tap water as their base, which is highly suspect due to the fluoride and other nasty contaminants present in municipal water supplies. So I recommend reading your labels carefully. If I get some bottled drink and the first ingredient just says water, uh, to me, that pretty much lets me know that they're using tap water. (laughs) And I really try to avoid drinking tap water whenever possible. So when you're buying bottled drinks or making your own drinks, uh, in this case, I would look for at least filtered water. But I think the best is like, you know, when it says triple filtered or reverse osmosis. And I'm actually such a water nerd that I'll, if I find a drink I like, you know, at Whole Foods or something, I'll actually email the company and say, okay, you say your water's filtered, how? I remember years ago, I did that with my favorite goat milk. I was making this goat milk kefir Uh, out of raw goat milk. And I was the a-hole that emailed the farm in central California and said, what kind of water do your goats drink? And I love their answer. It was, I think if I recall correctly, it was, um, it was well water, you know, which could be worse or better in some places, but it was at least to me better than tap water. So that's my take on the drinks, on the beverages there. Let's move on to Catherine. She asks, What's everyone's favorite probiotic? I'm pregnant and looking for the best. I've been taking Just Thrive and like it fine, but if anyone knows if there's a better one out there, I'd love to hear. So my answer there is congrats on the coming baby. Just about everyone I know has kids and every one of them tells me it's the most profound experience of their lives. Literally, like all of our friends here in Texas have kids. So I've been around more kids since I've moved here than I think ever in my life. And um Hope to be seeing one in our lives someday soon as well. Now, I've tried so many probiotics over the years, for real. Uh, I mean, I've been taking probiotics, I don't know, 25 years or something. And the only one I've really noticed uh, benefit from directly, and I think the one I've been most consistent with is the one she mentioned, Just Thrive, due to the nature of how it's formulated uh, by putting spores of bacteria in your body rather than the bacteria itself because many probiotics don't work that well because they get cooked in your GI tract and don't end up actually seeding your gut as desired. That said, I have derived benefit from a few different probiotics that weren't spore-based. So I'm not saying that, you know, Just Thrive is the only one that works because it spores. I think some others do as well. This is just the one I've had the most consistent success with. Uh, That said, I think it's smart to alternate probiotics to help the diversity of the bacteria in your gut biome. And if you want to go super next level, I think one of the smart things to do, at least periodically or or definitely once, is to get some stool testing done, which is no party, trust me. Not not a fun experience. I won't go into it in great detail here, but you're FedExing your poop to a lab and you know what that entails. So what happens is the lab will do an analysis of your poop and tell you exactly which bacteria are present. They'll also tell you uh, if there are any parasites, if you have dysbiosis. And if you're missing something in your biodiversity, then you can look for products that have those specific strains of bacteria in them, and you can take them for a while in order to get things balanced out. So a few other brands that I've found to be helpful have been Seed Probiotics, uh, ProBioMax, Butyrate suppositories from mitozen.com slash Luke. Those are cool. Again, if you're not afraid of your butt, uh, because you're not putting them in your stomach and into your GI tract with the ProBioMax suppositories from mitozen.com slash Luke. We'll put that again in the show notes. Uh, What's interesting there is you're putting butyrate and other probiotic strains of bacteria in the other end where it's much easier for them to proliferate and, you know, create a colony. So 
uh, I'll tell you a little secret here. And I'm, <laughs> again, this is not medical advice and it might sound crazy, but I'm going to tell you anyway, if I ever go off the rails with what I'm eating, like let's say when I eat a bunch of sugar and gluten and stuff, which trust me, I do. I think a lot of people are surprised because I'm such a health nut that, that I, you know, I don't go nuts sometimes and just live my life. Trust me, your boy here can, can throw down some gluten and sugar. Now, generally I regret it when I do, but sometimes it's worth it to just loosen up and not be so orthorexic and controlling about things. You know what I'm saying? If I do, and I remember, I will, before going to bed, put in one of the ProBioMax uh, MitoZen suppositories. And I find that I'm able to weather the storm of eating really, you know, um, inflammatory foods the night before. It, it works great for me as kind of a you know, an, an afterthought or aftercare when I decide to just go live my life. There's also a great probiotic called Claire Labs. That's K-L-A-I-R-E. And uh, they have a Therbiotic Complete probiotic that I've enjoyed. I have some in the fridge right now and I'll cycle that sometimes with the Just Thrive. You know, I, I think it's a good idea to just mix things up when it comes to probiotics at times and not necessarily take the same one for five years, right? Another important piece of the gut puzzle is prebiotics. You know, if you don't give your bacteria things like resistant starches and fiber to munch on, it makes it harder for them to colonize. And this can also be a little bit tricky without doing any testing, because if you have dysbiosis or overgrowth of the wrong bacteria, then taking prebiotics can actually make it work worse because you're feeding the bacteria that you don't want. So, you know, gut health is not by any stretch my area of expertise, but it is kind of one thing that I've, you know, spent some time working on for myself. And I don't know that I have it totally nailed, but those are a few of the things that have helped me. And I'll add one last uh, practice. And that is the importance of drinking high quality grass-fed bone broth to heal the gut and also nourish mother's body and the baby's body. There are a lot of incredibly nutrient dense uh, materials in a good, clean, grass-fed bone broth. And I think that it's something that anyone could be doing themselves a favor by drinking on a regular basis. Okay, next up, Rondi wants to know, can anyone recommend a good blue blocking computer screen protector? Great question. A few years ago, I was looking into these and then I found what I perceived to be a better solution. I've really not found a legit screen protector at this point because they're often hard to uh, to actually install correctly. They leave little bubbles. They're kind of funky. Uh, of course, when you get a new computer, then you have to switch it out. They're just, I don't know. I've just found that to be a little problematic, sort of like the, you know, the scratch resistant screens that go on your phone. They always kind of peel off and just get wonky. However, I do have some good news for you, Rondi. And that is there is an app that works a lot better, in my opinion, than the screens. It's called Iris and you can find it on my site. It's super cheap and has timers that you can adjust built in for day and night use. And it also does something a filter would never do, and that's reducing the flicker rate of the LED light in your monitor. So I've been using Iris for years and honestly can't imagine not having it. You know what, for those of you watching the video right now, I'm just gonna do a little demo. Now you won't be able to see my screen, but if you're watching this video, I'm gonna crank up the red light just like that. So if you're watching this, you just saw my face get crazy red. And you can also turn down the brightness. So those of you watching this video, see how I can like take it all the way down. It's uh, it's really pretty incredible. It's a great program. And it's like a dollar a month or something. I don't know. I honestly don't remember how much it is, but it's uh, it's not very much. Definitely, definitely worth it. And you know, you can apply it to any of your computers. I don't think they have a um, phone version of it, unfortunately. Now, for those watching the video, I just turned it off and you can see the contrast of the blue, right? I, I'm going to keep my blue light on about medium right now, just because if you have, uh, you know, studio lights going when you're recording a screen video like this, and then you have the red light, it just looks really weird. So because I love you guys, man, I'm going to take one for the team and just have that blue light on for the next 40 minutes or so as I wrap up this episode. But uh, Iris is badass and I would highly recommend it definitely worth the minimal investment. All right. I love this guy's name. His name is Luke. He posted the following question. He says, can you reuse your ice bath water multiple days? How long, uh, what can be added to make it last longer? All right, Luke, here's the deal on the ice baths. Now, back in the day, 
I had a Sears chest freezer and I had it set on a timer, like a Christmas light timer kind of thing to keep the water, hopefully around 35 to 40 degrees. And this was super cheap. You know, the whole operation was around 800 bucks, but the problem was always maintaining the temperature when the outside ambient temperature changed. So sometimes the bath wouldn't be cold enough. You know, I like to keep mine pretty low and sometimes it would freeze over completely and require me to take a kettlebell and pound these huge glaciers of ice to be able to get my body in there. And it sounds like, you know, big deal, whatever, you got to break a little ice. But it, it, when you're doing it every morning, it is kind of a pain in the ass. And the other issue was the issue that Luke is describing here, that the water would go swampy after just a few days of, of use. Um, the water gets gross faster if you're sweaty when you get into it. Uh, if you're dirty and especially if multiple people are using your ice bath. So the days when I'd have the homies come over in the middle of the summer, we're hanging out, maybe work out, everyone jumps in the ice bath. Um, you know, that water would only last a few days and it would get super nasty. So I tried things like 35% hydrogen peroxide and that helped slow the funk a little, but the water still went bad eventually. It wasn't like, you know, using chlorine or something, which I wouldn't want to use. I tried Epsom salt, which made the inside of the freezer rust. That is less than optimal because if it rusts, obviously you're going to get holes. And when the water leaks out the bottom, it could be leaking on electronics and things like that. So the safety was an issue there. I even tried using my Simply O3 uh, ozone generator and running the ozone bubbler into the water. And this would have worked actually because ozone is great at disinfecting water, which I'll talk about in a minute but it was just a hassle for me to carry the machine out into the backyard, plug in an extension cord, and then bubbles, bubble the ozone through the water. Just not very practical. I did it a couple of times. I was like, ooh, this is badass, but it really wasn't because it just too, took too much time and energy. I also tried pouring multiple bottles of 3% hydrogen peroxide in there, by the way, to no avail. Didn't really seem to slow down uh, the swamp factor at all. So my answer for Luke is to just plan on changing the water out every one to two weeks, which is a pain in the ass and also a huge waste of water for that matter, but still better in my opinion than not having an ice bath at all. The ultimate solution I found was getting a Morosco Forge professional ice bath, which has a built-in ozone generator that you can just click on and off. So every time I get in my uh, Morosco Forge, I just turn the ozone on while I'm in there. I'm in there about five minutes. I get out and I turn it off and uh, I've had mine, uh, my ice bath for many months and I've not had to change the water once ever. The water is pristine, clear, doesn't smell, doesn't get cloudy or funky. It's freaking awesome. And because the uh, Morosco Forge is stainless steel and not aluminum, like a chest freezer inside, I was also able to add tons of Epsom salt and magnesium flakes for extra therapeutic benefit. So it's kind of like a you know, like what you would get from going into hot springs with tons of great minerals in it, only it's freezing and kind of has the double benefit of the cold therapy, as well as all of these great minerals uh, that also ease aches and pains in the body and all that good stuff. So ultimately my answer for Luke is, um, you know, just put in the work and save the money. And when you can afford it, spring for the real deal with something like a Morosco Forge. Our next question is from Amanda. She asks, looking for the best handheld red light therapy device to help aid in healing a major open wound on a horse. Well, the one I mentioned earlier called the flex beam would likely do the trick, but you'll need to be mindful of the distance on an open wound. So when you're using red light therapy or lasers and things like this, uh, the proximity of the light, the power of the light, the wavelength of the light is really important. So you want to be mindful of that. The second thing that I would look into is a handheld cold laser from Power Medic. Uh, I've got it on my site. I've had two of them actually for many years. And I personally use that particular laser, the Power Medic laser, to heal the suture on my dog's belly from her spay surgery. When I adopted my dog Cookie, I actually picked her up from the clinic where they did that surgery. And she had a big you know, gash with stitches on her tummy. And I worked on it a little bit every day and it healed, I mean, at least twice as fast as it would have if I just left it alone. So Cookie's been biohacked a lot and usually successfully. <laughs> I think there's been a couple things I've tried that didn't work. Maybe a couple things that bugged the shit out of her, but for the most part, um, I've had good luck with that. And it really does. It works like magic and it comes with a manual for various applications. So as I said, there will be different settings and a different distance um, from which you 
hold it over the skin based on whether it's an open wound or a deep wound, uh, you know, a sprain, a fracture or something like that. And they're not cheap, but definitely one of the most powerful healing tools and one that I would sorely miss in times of need, like the one you described. Now with all of these tech devices that run into the hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, uh, I want people to remember that it is often possible, depending on where you're situated, to find a practitioner that has invested in equipment like this that you can go see and just pay per session, right? Rather than having to buy it yourself. However, the flex beam, uh, if I recall right, is around three or $400, something like that. So that one's uh, much more accessible to people than something like the power medic laser. But if you've, uh, you know, if you've won the lottery or worked really hard and been successful financially, uh, I think there are some of these things that are just great investments. Um, and, you know, I'm also of the mind that over time, if I'm going to be using something over and over again, uh, as is the case with the power medic laser, I think it was $5,000 for the two pack of lasers that I got, which of course is a lot of money, but I don't know, to me, if every time I got a sprain, a bruise, a burn, a cut, and I had to take the time and energy to go see someone to treat me with a laser, I probably would have spent more money, definitely more time and energy by now over the many years that I've had it. I think I've had that thing about, God, probably six years. So I've used it on many of my friends. In fact, a friend of mine, uh, my friend Doyle just came into town on tour. He's a guitar player. He plays with Eric Clapton. And he's like, dude, I got tennis elbow from working out. What do you got? So he came over and you guys like that name drop. I don't live in Hollywood anymore, so I don't get to name drop very much because I, I don't know as many famous people, but he's just follow him. Doyle Bramhall II. He's a freaking incredible human and guitar player. But anyway, he texted me, Hey, let's hang out. Let's go to the show. And I have this problem with my elbow. So he came over uh, and we treated him with the two peptides that I talked to you about before the uh, TB500 and BPC157. I injected those in his elbow. Uh, I sent him away with some full syringes in a cold pack for him to administer uh, them himself. And then I actually lent him my power medic lasers because they're just so effective. So he's somewhere in Florida right now playing more shows and I'm hopefully going to check in with him and get the news that, wow, Luke, your, your crazy biohacking stuff actually worked. And uh, I'm sure that it's helped. I lent it to a lot of friends in LA that had, you know, like um, tennis elbow kind of stuff, um, tendinitis in the wrist, bruises. I lent it to one friend who had this plantar fasciitis, I think it's called some problem with his foot. And he was grinding that laser on there and saw great results. So for me, it was worth the investment to be able to not only treat my friends, my dog, um, my family and myself, but just to have something like that and kind of have my own little clinic of sorts. And as long as you follow the instructions uh, that come with these tech devices, they are uh, for the most part, you know, very safe and effective. So for the horse with the gash, uh, since this question came in a while ago, I'm assuming that our friend already sorted it out and it's probably healed by now. At least that would be my hope. But uh, for future reference, red light therapy, lasers, things like that are incredible for wounds. This next question is a great one. And I have to admit the person who asked the question's name evades me at the moment. Somehow when I copy and pasted the question, I missed their name. So whoever that was, kudos to you because I love this question. They want to know the best David R. Hawkins book or interview. And uh, I would say the first one I read was a book called Power Versus Force, which is by far his most popular. It's a fairly simple, yet a bit more analytical book. Uh, but I found it to be, even though it was intriguing and it kept me reading his books and listening to his lectures and going to see him speak, uh, it's a little bit sterile. You know, it's, it's, it's more of a scientifically based book. Um, so for left brain dominant folks, I would say power versus force would be a great starting point. However, right before he passed, he just kind of dropped this incredible book called with, with, without much fanfare. I mean, just kind of dropped it, just snuck it out. I think it was like I perceive it to be his kind of parting gift to us. And it's called Letting Go. I've talked about it a lot on the show. Uh, Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender. This book is pure gold and a much easier read for someone just getting into his work. In fact, it's, it's a pretty dramatic departure from the rest of his work and that it's written in such simplistic and basic terms. But don't let the simplicity fool you because it's incredibly powerful. I mean, he has tons of great books. Uh, one I would point to is called I, Reality Versus Subjectivity. That book, no joke, took me about two years to read. It's just so dense and incredibly powerful. 
And I could only take about a paragraph at a time. That's why it took me so long. It's not the kind of book that I could just sit down and whiz through in a week or something like that. It's just, it's just incredibly powerful uh, information. And it required more of a, more of a study than a read, if you know what I mean. Some books I read, I just want to get the information. Some books I really contemplate and study because I want to integrate the principles in those books as I read them. So the more complex books um, get much easier after one has listened to a lot of his lectures and audiobooks as well. So if you want to dive into some of his deeper work, I find that when I listen to, and this is just me because I just love this cat's teachings, uh, I've listened to, I want to say hundreds, but by this time, honestly, it's probably been thousands of hours of David Hawkins lectures and audiobooks. And then when I go back to his books, even the ones that are a bit more dense and um, require much more contemplation and focus, I get a lot more aha moments because I've been listening to him talk about the same concepts and principles for so long and so many times. So I'd recommend getting any of his uh, audiobooks on Audible and just digging in. And as I said, he's really my all-time favorite teacher and one that I'm so grateful to have seen in person on two occasions, one of which being his last public talk. And I'll close in saying that the teachings of Dr. David R. Hawkins have just changed my life profoundly. I highly recommend. And uh, as I said, getting into some of the audio is a good entry point to then actually getting the books and beginning to read them. But uh, very powerful spiritual truths coming out of that man. Okay, now Abby wants to know, has anyone tried any of these bracelets that are supposed to help mitigate EMF? I just got one from Body Align gifted to me, and it's basically just a rubber feeling wristband with a sticker inside. Uh, I've read really good reviews, but then saw a review stating that it actually raises EMF uh, levels to the body. Has anyone tested these? So this is a fun one. I I love these questions because the, the field of EMFs is just so confusing and overwhelming once you start to learn about it. Over the past 20 plus years, I've been studying EMF and EMF mitigation. And there have been over those years, dozens of little stickers, necklaces, Uh, and gadgets that are supposed to help with EMF. And to be honest, it's very difficult to discern the real from the fake because the only way to test these things is with muscle testing. And you must either be very skilled at muscle testing uh, or, and, or actually, and non-attached to the results to get accurate results. And uh, you also have to have someone else generally who's also non-attached and skilled at it nearby. Now, some people do muscle testing on themselves, Uh, I've tried to learn it a few times over the years and found it to be very difficult. Uh, Speaking of David Hawkins, I mean, that was the basis of a lot of his work. But um, the issue really with testing EMF blocking is that it scientifically requires the tech to actually block EMF, which is what you detect with EMF meters. However, if you block EMF, your wireless devices no longer work. So let's say I wrap my phone in a Faraday cage. I've effectively blocked the EMF for sure, because you can test it, you know, scientifically, verifiably, but your phone's now dead. So that's where it gets a little bit tricky with some of these harmonizing devices and quantum devices, et cetera, because I do believe there are a lot of fake ones on the market that really have no effect whatsoever. And it takes quite a bit of research and trial and error or being really good, as I said, at muscle testing to determine if they're actually effective. Now, as for the Body Align products, uh, I've not heard much of them and I haven't tried them, but what I have heard has been good. And I don't remember who it was, but a couple of reputable people that I talked to that I respect on these matters said, oh yeah, the Body Align thing's cool. You should check it out. You know, people send me stuff and recommend things to me all the time. So I've not heard anything uh, negative about that. So I don't know if that one works. You could go to someone who's great at kinesiology and have them test whether or not it makes you uh, strong or not strong. Now that doesn't necessarily tell you that, um, that it's protecting you from EMF, but it does tell you if it has a positive impact on your body. Outside of muscle testing or EMF meter testing, there are many brands that I use and also recommend that uh, do various testing using uh, HRV readings, Uh, They test the growth or non-growth of plants, brainwave testing, et cetera. And this type of testing doesn't tell you if the EMF is being blocked per se, but it does for sure tell you that the field these devices create has a positive impact on biological organisms like the human body. So because it's not blocking EMF, it's difficult to determine whether or not 
the effect it's having is positive as it relates to the damage that EMF is likely causing you. But uh, I'm convinced that there are a few products on the market that definitely help support the body. And in so doing, uh, allow the body to be more resilient to the offenses of EMF in your environment. So here are the products I use to mitigate EMF on the body and also on my devices. First one probably being my favorite and definitely the least expensive. It's called FLFE or Focused Life Force Energy. I have this service on my phone, which mitigates EMF using a field of quantum energy. Now, again, this stuff gets kind of woo-woo and spooky and any pragmatic, uh, practical, science-minded people listening to this are like, bullshit. But I, I just believe in it, you know, from interviewing a lot of the people I'm about to uh, uh, talk about here in these products and um, also seeing some of the research that I described a moment ago regarding plants growing, animals being healthier, HRV scores going up, uh, live blood cell analysis, things like this, where you can tell, you can put someone in a high EMF field, then use one of these devices and you can do a blind, they do a lot of blind studies where someone's, you know, uh, live blood cell analysis or HRV or something like that is uh, in bad shape when they're in a high EMF field. They introduce unknowingly some of these technologies and then everything goes back to normal and is optimized. So it's doing something positive. And I know for a fact that EMF in our environment, no matter whether we believe it or not, is doing something negative to a lesser or greater degree, depending on the type of field and depending on our proximity to that field in terms of how we're being exposed. So huge fan of FLFE. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. You can get, I think like a 15 or 30 day free trial and you can turn it on, turn it on your phone, on your house, see if you feel better, see if you feel different. And if you don't, just don't go buy it. I think after that, it's $35 a month or something like that. Well worth it. I have it on our temporary apartment. I have it on our home that's under construction on my phone. I have it on my mom's house, uh, the wife's phone, everywhere. FLFE is just badass. Then there is the Defender Shield phone case. I actually have one sitting in front of me right here for the people on the video. I'm not going to open it because you probably see my ID or credit card number. There you go. Boom. Uh, I've also put this other little sticker on my phone by a company called CMO. It's the MP24. They sent it to me and it, I don't know, just intuitively felt legit. So I stuck that on there too. But the uh, Defender Shield phone case is awesome. So is the laptop case. And they actually, you know, verifiably block the EMF on the side of the phone that faces your face. Now, if Defender Shield made a case that blocked 100% of the EMF all around the phone, guess what would happen? Your phone wouldn't work. It would be dead. So the way the Defender Shield works, so again, for those of you on the video, is the, uh, the RF or radio frequencies coming from the phone towards your face and towards your head are blocked. I think it's 99.9%. So I like to use that shield. Uh, if I put the phone in my pocket and it's not on airplane mode because I'm expecting a call, uh, I'll put the shielded side of the Defender Shield case facing my body so that that radiation is not going into my body uh, on that side. And if I'm talking on the phone using speakerphone or something like that, I'll hold it far away and also you know, face that side that's protected toward my head, et cetera. Then we've got uh, the Blue Shield Pocket Protector, which is a scalar wave generator. Again, that one's not blocking EMF, but definitely does create a harmonious field that is supportive to your biology. And according to them and some pretty credible testing they've done with farm animals and things like that, I've done a podcast about it actually, uh, they get great results with harmonizing the field, the chaotic waveforms of EMF by introducing another waveform that is more biologically suitable. Then we've got uh, Leela Quantum Tech. Uh, they make an ampule necklace with quantum charged titanium balls in it. Super spooky stuff. I wear it a lot in my podcast. I don't think I have it on right now, but people ask me about it all the time. What's that crazy little thing? You should have seen me going through TSA with the Leela Quantum Tech. They took it all apart. They're like, what's, what is this in there? <laughs> you know, like, what do you think it is? Like balls of heroin? Like they're little metal balls that like, get out of my face. But I said, it's a religious ornament. And they ran it through the x-ray again. And they were like, okay, get out of here, you weirdo. But I made it through and I did not go through, by the way, never, ever do I go through the millimeter wave scanner. I mean, if you guys are worried about 5G, you <laughs> I'll just tell you, you're walking through a 5G tower, like close proximity. I would never, ever walk through one of those things. That's just me. Call me paranoid. 
So I always, you know, opt out, wait there for like two hours for the pat down and I get a free massage. Anywho, uh, Leela Quantum Tech also makes uh, EMF protective caps and uh, t-shirts and clothing. I think they have a little hoodie now, which is really cool. And you can actually learn all about the science and some of the incredible research that Leela Quantum Tech is doing next Tuesday on episode 373. Super cool stuff. And then, of course, we've got a Lambs EMF blocking underwear. I just ran into them at conference and they now have, yay, applause, please, women's bras, panties, and even uh, pregnant belly wraps, which is really cool. Uh, if I were a pregnant woman, and who knows, maybe I have been in a past life, I'd be wearing one of their belly wraps 24-7. Like, seriously, I would want to be keeping that little that little fetus, that little guy or girl in there um, away from you know, the 5G and RF. So Lambs is a great company uh, for the EMF blocking clothing in general. They started out just making men's underwear. I ordered a million pairs of them and just threw out all my other underwear because you know you can't really donate those to charity, right? Uh, and I've been wearing those exclusively for a number of years. And I remember when they came out, uh, I think they're from France, the, uh, the company themselves, really high quality clothing too, super soft, great cotton, well-designed. Uh, over the years, the EMF clothing, you know, it's, it's not been that well-made, not that comfortable, doesn't fit that well. So when Lambs came out with these really great men's uh, briefs, I was like, dude, what about the ladies? And they, they, they finally did it. They nailed it. So I would especially be if I was a woman, I'd be very interested in the bras and again, those pregnant wraps um, because you want to protect your reproductive organs from radiation. Or maybe you don't. Maybe you just have mind over matter and you don't worry about it. I know I just dropped a bunch of names on you guys. So again, you can find links to all of this stuff in the show notes uh, at lukestory.com slash 372. And you should also be able to just click on the show notes on Spotify or you know the iTunes um, or the Apple podcast app, whatever you're listening to this on, we do a pretty good job of making sure all of the show notes are on there as well. So get down with that EMF protection and uh, you know do what makes sense to you. Listen to your gut, listen to your heart, find someone who's good at muscle testing and you know test whether or not it works for you. Okay, the next question is from Amanda. She says, I am curious if anyone here is a millennial struggling with chronic illness and have you ever wondered if there is a link between your symptoms and some mental slash emotional or childhood trauma? I would say, Amanda, ding, 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 ding. You nailed it 100%. Uh, I've never met anyone personally that's chronically ill that didn't have unresolved emotional trauma straight up. I'm, I'm sure they exist, but I just haven't met any that have shared enough of their personal story with me. So although I am not a millennial, I can pretty much guarantee that your physical illness is in some part related to unresolved emotional trauma. So for me, healing trauma is priority number one if you want to have a life of joy, emotional health, and prosperous, supportive relationships. And I'm going to just be honest here. After all of the years I've been working on self-healing and personal development and growth, for me, the biggest shifts have come through plant medicine work. And this must be navigated carefully. And I've done many podcasts on it to encourage people to enter into this practice with prudence, to say the least. But in my experience, I mean, I have to be honest here, nothing has even come close to the level of transformation and healing I've personally experienced, whether it's been plant medicines like ayahuasca, peyote, San Pedro, or mushrooms, uh, animal medicines, I guess you could say, like 5-MeO-DMT, the quantum leaps that I've experienced have truly been beyond this world and everlasting. The healing that's taken place within my spirit, mind, and soul uh, in those various um, explorations has actually stuck. And that has a lot to do with the integration. However, for people who are not situated in a place in their life to do plant medicine safely, there is an emerging field of therapy using things like MDMA, psilocybin, and ketamine in a clinical setting, you know, very safely with trained professionals to achieve the same results. Uh, you know, people with very acute PTSD, such as veterans, et cetera, and many people also with, you know, physical manifestations of trauma as this question pertained to. Uh, so I would say if your lifestyle, your circle of friends is not one that is going to easily lead you into the route of, you know, going rogue and doing plant medicines and psychedelics in a ceremonial way, uh, it would definitely be worth looking into uh, doing it legally and under the guidance of a medical professional. 
not for everyone at all times, but you know, this is just me pointing you in a direction where you can go research and feel into that using your own heart and intuition. Now, if the routes just described are not an option for you at all, there are other ways, you know, you might look into something like the Hoffman process, uh, up in Napa, Northern California. There's also a center called Onsite in Nashville. I've done both and they helped me at least get a really good head start on healing some of the trauma in my life, childhood trauma, et cetera, before I was able to use plant medicine. Also in my subjective experience, the practice of Kundalini yoga was extremely healing uh, in terms of emotional trauma that also in, in my life manifested as, as many physical difficulties. Uh, Kundalini yoga is much more accessible to many people than um, plant medicines and such. But I think in that practice, which I did for, I don't know, eight years or so quite regularly, actually just went today here in Austin and did a Kundalini yoga class. That's probably why it's coming to mind. Uh, I was able to uh, go to a friend's house and take a class with a woman named Gurmukh, who I used to uh, sit with in Los Angeles many, many years ago. So that was a treat to kind of get back into that practice. And I think today I was really reminded of the emotional, medicinal experience of that particular yoga. I mean, it, it can really sort you out if you, uh, you know, relate with it, if it works for you, you identify and you're fine that you're able to find some discipline and regularity in your practice. And for me, the trauma release and the healing that took place through my study of Kundalini yoga is really what led me into some of the deeper healing that I experienced later on uh, with the plant medicines and such. And also keep in mind that uh, for me, I think my situation was somewhat unique. I was 22 years sober and had been doing healing and personal development work nonstop the entire time before I took the plunge into medicines and psychedelics. So I can only speak to my experience. I think that um, it's been fruitful and beneficial for me because I've been very discerning uh, about the timing with which I've had these experiences, the people who have led me, uh, you know, the facilitators, et cetera. I've been pretty careful yet somewhat consistent over the past four or so years. Um, and I think a lot of the work that I did, just the spiritual study and years of meditation and prayer and Kundalini yoga and breath work and all of those other things really helped prepare me to have a psychological framework on which to build those healing experiences. But back to the question about chronic illness as it pertains to unresolved emotional trauma, I would agree 1000% because man, the body keeps the scores. They say a lot of this trauma that we experience emotionally and even earlier physical trauma makes its way into our tissues and, uh, and it stays locked in there until we find ways to get it out. And of course there are different, you know, types of body work and other physical practices such as breath work that can be very effective in, in getting this out. Somatic experiencing. I mean, anything you can find that claims to help heal trauma is going to help get that out of your system. And, uh, in my experience, absolutely help you to overcome physical challenges and chronic illnesses as well. I think if you heal your heart, mind, and soul, you will likely watch the body follow. Okay, our next question is from Hannah. She says, psilocybin, microdosers, anyone experience skin burning, hot flashing, itching, etc. about half to an hour after taking your daily dose? It subsides after about 15 minutes. Any insights? So Hannah, this question leads me to believe that the formula you're taking probably has niacin in it, which is great. It helps uh, recirculate the medicine throughout your body and brain. And if the flushing effect is uncomfortable, perhaps try splitting your dose in two with a little time in between. There was a period where I was doing some intensive detoxing in a sauna, it has nothing to do with psilocybin, but I was doing a lot of niacin. So you do an increasing dose of niacin every day for 30 days and get in the sauna. And I know what that's like. It's very uncomfortable when you get your flush on with like a little mini OD of niacin. And that's probably what it is. But as I said, I'm a huge fan of mixing the niacin with uh, that particular compound because of its, uh, its you know, effect in getting in your body thoroughly. I'm sure many are wondering where to get a hold of uh, these microdose formulas like Hannah has. And people ask me all the time, but sadly due to legality, I cannot make any recommendations there. However, outside of the U.S., there are a growing number of plant medicine retreat centers. 
where you are sure to meet like-minded folks who can probably put you in touch with the appropriate party from which you can acquire the goods. You'll also likely find some uh, similar people, you know, similar tribe members in local breathwork and meditation groups, et cetera. And the burning mat lot, those burners are often very hip to uh, microdosing, et cetera, and might be able to connect you with a supplier if you can befriend some of that lot. But again, be mindful. Uh, psilocybin is illegal in most states in the United States and in many other countries. So uh, be, be careful before breaking the law, kids. You know what I'm saying? But I am hopeful that organizations like MAPS and others are going to be bringing psilocybin therapy into the medical world and helping with the legality. Because I think especially that particular uh, medicine just has incredible potential, not only for microdosing, for depression, anxiety, creativity, brain function, et cetera, but also for some of the deeper healing that I mentioned in the prior question. So if you have an opportunity to uh, support initiatives that are going to um, help with uh, legalization, I would highly encourage you to do so. I think it'll be a great service for humankind based on my own experience and the experience of so many friends uh, over the years who have benefited tremendously from these medicines. Okay, we've got uh, two more questions here. This one's from Susie. She says, COVID scrambled my brain after I'd only recently even begun to unscramble it from having neurological Lyme disease. And now I'm dealing with depression and a worsening of my mixed type ADHD symptoms. I can't take any stimulants because I'm also recovering from adrenal fatigue. Man, I hear you. Susie, thank you for sharing. She also says, uh, my therapist said that there are good ADHD choices. Has anyone ever tried one or recommend one? I've already thoroughly combed prior posts for ADHD treatments, but besides sun, exercise, neurofeedback, 5-HTP, and, Sh- and St. John's wort, does anyone have any other tricks for depression? Uh, she says, also, I rarely eat carbs or sugar of any kind and eat 100% organic. I'm exercising as much as my lungs can handle, but I'm uh, more than a tiny, what does it say here? I am exercising as much as possible, yada, yada, yada. Okay. She's working with a great therapist as well. It was a long question. I couldn't get through without screwing it up. Uh, so I'm going to say to uh, Susie here, first off, man, I feel for you. It sounds like you've had a really challenging time, but I do have some suggestions that I think will be uh, helpful if you'd like to look into them. Microdosing has been uh, helpful for me, as I mentioned in the last question, in terms of depression, mood regulation, et cetera. However, the single most powerful thing I have ever done for my brain, mood, and especially focus is a training called Think Interfaces with Dr. Lana Morrow. And after only six 45-minute sessions with her, my brain, the brain of old Luke's story here, you're, you're a faithful host, has never been this sharp and focused. It's absolutely nuts, no joke. And you can learn all about her and her work on episode 376, which drops after the one you're listening to on October 2nd, 2021. And lucky for me and all of my friends here who want sharper brains, she just moved to Austin, Texas from New York City and is seeing clients at her office here at Alive and Well in Bee Cave, which is a uh, kind of a suburb of Austin. And in my opinion and experience, there is nothing that turns on the brain and heals ADD, ADHD, and other neurological issues such as Parkinson's, et cetera, like think training. Uh, For those listening that are having these kind of problems, uh, I'm going to go ahead and vouch for this and say it would be worth the trip if you can afford it. I think the whole program is somewhere around five to $6,000, but I believe there is now financing in place for people who want to pay it off over time. Now, don't quote me on that. I'm just, you know, basing this on my most recent conversation with Dr. Lana. And um, it's just something that's so powerful and effective. I, I just want to find a way to make it more accessible for people. And it's just starting to emerge in the mainstream. She's been working on this technology for many years. She's a brilliant PhD neuroscientist and she's kind of finally coming to the mainstream with it. And the podcast that I mentioned, number 376, is one of her first kind of big, you know, plunges into the world of media and social media, et cetera. So as someone who's done anything and everything under the sun to get my brain back, especially after so many years of drug abuse, uh, to dispel my brain fog, improve memory, et cetera. This has been truly a godsend for me. And I've also done tons of neurofeedback 
and all sorts of other tech and supplements, as you know, and nothing's even come close. And I'm a huge fan of neurofeedback. I mean, I think it's great. And I've benefited uh, much from the neurofeedback training that I've done, but think interfaces and no offense to any practitioners of neurofeedback, but in my experience, think training, it makes neurofeedback like, I don't know, taking a vitamin C pill or something. It's just like, it's way more powerful and way faster and actually uh, much cheaper because of the you know amount of sessions needed when you do neurofeedback. Now that's not to say all of the, God, I don't know, dozens of neurofeedback sessions that I've done in the past, and I'll continue to promote and support neurofeedback, but you know, who's to say that all the neurofeedback I did didn't play some part in making Dr. Lana's work even more effective. I, I've never asked her that actually, but you know, maybe I got a head start on my brain through all of the other things I've done to improve brain function, like hyperbaric chambers and all of the nootropics and all the things, right? Even microdosing, et cetera. So maybe Dr. Lana's work for me, which just potentiated everything I've done before. There's no way to know without going back in time and not doing any of that stuff for all these years and just going to see Dr. Lana. But I have to say, man, I'm like, I feel like I'm on nootropics all the time. Like my brain is firing on all cylinders and it feels so good. I have never felt this smart. And I've sent many friends to her uh, with issues like ADD, ADHD, PTSD, anxiety, et cetera. And every one of them has come back going, wow, this is incredible. So worth checking out, get in touch with her, listen to the podcast that's coming up and uh, definitely think it's worth exploring. Next question is from Ted. He says, anyone care to share their experience using modafinil? My wife's doctor recommends she take it to help her MS. I know it's used sometimes as a nootropic. Curious to hear people's experience with it. And if by chance any of this group had any experience with treating MS, I'm all ears. Hey man, my heart goes out to you, Ted. You and uh, the misses there with MS that um, I'm sure has been challenging at times, but um, there there is hope for you for sure and for her. My answer to this actually is the same as the last question. Um, for MS, there's nothing I've heard of to be as effective as Think Interfaces with Dr. Lana. So I'd say Ted, get in touch with her and confirm that. You know, really ask her uh, how many people with MS she's worked with. I know she's worked with a lot of people with Parkinson's and things like autism. So for neurological disorders, uh, as far as I know, she's been very successful, but I would definitely, you know, get on the phone with her. She's rather uh, accessible and she'll be able to give you more information. But to the modafinil question, now I've used this stuff for years and honestly, it's been a lifesaver. I usually take uh, 25 milligrams, which is one fourth dose of a tablet. It comes in like a 200 milligram tablet. And it's very useful for focus and mental stamina. Uh, however, again, after working with Dr. Morrow, um, I don't really find that I need it except when I'm flying to beat jet lag and to arrive at my destination with clarity and alertness. It's a really interesting compound because it, it like improves your mental focus and clarity and definitely makes you alert, but I don't find it to be speedy. It's not like drinking a bunch of caffeine or taking, well, I've never taken Adderall, but back in my drug years, I, I did take a, a fair amount of um, methamphetamine, which I hated, but sometimes even feeling shitty was better than feeling like me. So I would do it from time to time and always regret it. So I don't like that feeling at all personally. Uh, and I never got that feeling from modafinil, but again, I don't think I've ever taken a whole tablet, uh, but it's a, it's an interesting compound because it's proven to be safe and non-addictive. Like anyone I've ever talked to in the medical field that I've asked about modafinil, they're like, yeah, it's basically, it just doesn't work on the part of your brain that elicits addiction. So, you know, I've never met anyone that's been addicted to it like they would with Adderall or some other amphetamine based uh, alert medication. Right. Um, and also the interesting thing about modafinil is that I wouldn't say that I can sleep right afterward, but I could take it earlier in the day or even in the afternoon and then sleep just fine. So it doesn't, it doesn't keep me awake. And I've, fall, I've taken it on an airplane and then fallen asleep for like three hours. It's, it's super weird. Um, it's actually, it was invented for narcolepsy. So it's like, it will keep you awake if you want to stay awake. This is again, just my experience, but I've never really laid there all night with like a heart beating out of my chest because I took modafinil. Yet it has some of the same benefits of just making your brain super sharp, et cetera. So it's a very interesting um, 
you know, medication and it is prescription. So you would need to get, uh, you know, a prescription from your doctor. You can find it online, but because it's technically prescription, it's in kind of a gray area. So the sites that sell it are often in India and they'll get shut down periodically. In fact, I used to link to it in my online store, uh, you know, cause I'd find a good source for it that was clean and legit and all of that. Uh, the brand I've used is called mode alert. And, uh, so I'd find a good source and then it would, you know, get shut down or whatever, because it's kind of dark web sort of stuff, I guess, for lack of a better term. And then people started emailing like, Hey, I need a new link. And I just couldn't keep up with it. So for modafinil with me, once I find a good source, I buy literally like three to five years worth at a time, because it's often such a hassle to order. Sometimes you have to use like crypto and it's just funky. But I also don't take it very often. The more uh, success I've had in working on brain health and brain function, I just find that it's it's like overkill. I don't really need modafinil again, except um, when flying. I find it to be really useful depending on the time zone, uh, which I'm going to arrive in, or if I want to sit down and do like some deep, deep focus work for many hours and just get in the zone and put my head down and not look up. It's been useful for that. As far as MS, uh, I don't really know what the symptoms are exactly. And I don't know that it would be an appropriate medication for that. So I would continue to do more research and again, get in uh, touch with Dr. Lana and see if she can help with your wife's MS issues. I have a feeling she might be able to help if not point you in the right direction. And uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about the modafinil. Again, I think it's, um, it's been useful for me over the years and not something that's become terribly habitual or having any sort of addiction potentials. And trust me, if anyone can get addicted to something, folks, it, it's your boy, Luke here. <laughs> I've, historically, I've had a very addictive personality. So the fact that I've used modafinil and never been like freaking out because I'm out of it or waiting until I can get home to do it again and lying to my friends about it and not showing up at work because I'm off taking modafinil, you know, it just, it's not that kind of thing in my experience. If you've heard otherwise, you know, take heed, but uh, it's been a very useful tool although much less so these days since um, Dr. Lana hooked my brain up. Okay, folks, we made it. I hope that this has been a helpful episode to some of you. Thanks for posting your questions in the Life Stylist Podcast Facebook group. For those of you like me who despise communist Facebook, uh, I would recommend that you join my uncensored Telegram channel. You can find that at lukestory.com slash Telegram. That's lukestory.com slash Telegram. I'll warn you, uh, there are no unicorns and rainbows on my Telegram channel. It's just hard, cold news about what's going on in the world right now that I have not found another outlet on which I can share such views and news. So join me on Telegram if you want to get down and dirty. If not, join the Facebook group and we'll just keep the love and light flowing over there. And we'll keep taking these great questions from the brilliant members of that group. And I'll do my best to answer as many as I can in future solo casts. And I'd like to remind you that you can find the show notes, transcripts, and links for this episode at lukestory.com slash 372. And with that, my friends, I'll be back next week with 373. It's called How to Charge Your Home Food Supplements and Pets with Quantum Energy. And I'll be talking about the incredible technology from Leela Quantum Tech. Super cool stuff. And uh, can't wait to see you guys at Meet Delic, November 6th and 7th. If you want to learn more about the uh, emerging third wave of psychedelics and plant medicines, uh, that would be a great event to check out. And so thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back next week. Mm -hmm.